So, 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 uh, who became your male role models? Uh, okay, our, our, my, our, actually, my role models became the coaches that I co played for. Uh, I, I played all the sports, so I had different coaches. And in football, I had a guy that was was the reason I'm a Giant fan is because his brother was our coach, Andy Robustelli, played defensive. Uh, defensive line of end for the New York Giants. Uh -huh. And his brother was up my high school football coach. And okay. he would come to El Paso every spring training us and, and help his brother coaches. Mm -hmm. So uh, so he had a great influence on me. My baseball coach was a old man named Nemo Herrera. Nemo. I was going to ask you, oh, who was man. he and what role did he play? He in played the life? biggest role. Oh, is that true? Yes, because see, my love for baseball was unquestionable. Mm -hmm. He got me going. Uh, I, I never forget, Nemo was the only first person that ever sat down as a coach to talk to old mom. And she loved Nemo. Uh -huh. You know, Nemo. Oh, well, he came by and talked to her. He'd come in the house and sit down and visit with her. And, and you know, because Nemo was, a, the, the, all the kids, I mean, he was just, uh, he was a legend in his, in his, in his day. He's just a big, he was, uh, coached in San Antonio, Texas for years and years and then came to El Paso and won a state championship in 1949, the first state championship ever won and probably in any sport was by him mm -hmm. at that school. And 10 years later, uh, uh, I graduated from the same school that he won a state championship and he coached me in and once I graduated, he looked, two years later, I think he left and went to another high school. But Nemo Guerrero had a lot to do with, with what happened to me growing up uh, uh, there was a man by the name of K.O. Pettis. I, they, all these guys that passed away, I have scholarships in their name. Uh, K.O. was never the head coach to coach me, but was always in the junior high and high school. And as I grew up as a little guy playing little league baseball, you know, you could always go to him. He would always either help you, whatever he had, anything. So I had those kind of people that were very close to me and they were my coaches. Mm -hmm. No, let's spotlight what you just said. These were two males who had a tremendous influence on your life and, and so here we are today many many years later and you still harbor a deep respect and appreciation for them to the extent that as you just said you create a scholarship in your name. Tell us a little bit more about that. That's powerful. Well, you know, the people, and you know, I, I, like I said, all my coaches, I hate to even leave, like our basketball coach was Al Franco. I uh, had a lot to do with my life. Uh, you know, when I stopped to think of every sport, Fred Rosas, uh, track, I high jumped and played football. He was the, uh, those guys are uh, the only ones, I think they're probably, when I look at all the coaches that, that I played for, I believe every one of them is gone now. Mm -hmm. uh, passed away. Uh, I started my my with my daughter passing away 25 years ago. Uh, we started a pro a charity organization where I started with about two or three charities trying to help, and that's those organizations. After found out about them trying to help these people, it grew to. 35 of them now. I got 35 charities that I, mm. and in those 35 charities, we set up scholarships, and, and of course, my daughter's name, in the name of uh, Coach Franco's. I mean, that's, that's Coach Franco is the one that's still alive. He's my basketball coach. He's still alive. Don Haskins. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a, a scholarship in mm -hmm. his name. Don Haskins scholarship. Uh, we had a. We have, for example, one of the black teachers who I thought. Did a lot for El Paso, Miss Washington. We've set up a scholarship in, in her name, mm -hmm. and so as you as, as I go around, uh, you know, uh, doing the charity work now, uh, it, it does me feel makes me feel much better because of Yvonne, who was the daughter who has been she gone died of uh, leukemia. Yes, uh -huh. twenty five years of giving back and. We've raised over 1.5 million in those mm. years to have given back into the community and in everywhere I live. You know, we have a scholarship deal in Arkansas, one in Tulsa University, one in 
Western Texas, where I coached. Um, mm -hmm. We have, and of course at UTEP, which is Texas. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. You know, so with with her passing away, and her name is, it still goes on. There's a recreation center in her name in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the Yvonne Richardson Center. Uh, Yvonne's got a, a, a daycare type center in El Paso, a street named after her. You know, she lives on. She continues to give, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the priest that, that put her to rest. Had, I visit with him every year, sometimes three or four times a year in El Paso. But he said, and he made a lot of sense. This in, in Yvonne's death, she has given back to way more than a lot of us will ever give. In a lot, yes, yes, living. Yeah, you know. Yes. So that has been something very close, very special to me, doing that kind of work. But uh, uh, it's just something that, that I, I enjoy feeling inside. My wife, Rose, she feels great about what we're trying to, to do in the charity department.